Great. Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Tushar Mehta. I'm an orthopedic surgeon and a faculty of orthopedics for uh, PGI aspirants as well as the postgraduate residents. Well, today this is a very small video that I'm recording on a topic which is essentially a topic of anatomy, but we tend to discuss this in uh, orthopedics often. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of this heading before. This is something that you start hearing right from your first year MBBS. Uh, so today we are going to talk about a very important part of uh, a structure of an immature skeleton. So we will be talking about the growth plate, the physis. Let's discuss the anatomy of the physis. Uh, well, I'm sure you all can appreciate, you know, what is an epiphysis, what is a diaphysis, what is metaphysis, and then you have this layer called as physis. It's a, it's a slab which is essentially made up of hyaline cartilage which is lying between the epiphysis and the metaphysis. So it is, you know, precisely a layer of cartilage, to be honest, which later on ossifies into bone. Now, when we talk about the structure, you know, there are five very important layers in this area. One is called as the resting zone or the germinal zone. We will discuss the individual layers, of course, but let's first name them. Then you have the proliferative zone. Then you have the hypertrophic zone. Then you have the zone of, uh, you know, calcification or, you know, it is almost adhered to, submerged to zone of ossification. And then, of course, there's a zone of Ranvier and then you have the periosteal sheath. Let's first start the discussion of the first layer, that is the resting zone or the uh, uh, germinal zone. See, guys, uh, first of all, let me tell you that this zone, this layer, the first layer, which is the resting zone or the germinal zone, its essential job is to do storage. So it is essentially mainly for storage. It can store lipids, it can store glycogen, it can store proteoglycans. But the basic name, the basic essence of this layer is storage. You see a lot of germinal cells. You have to understand why we call it a germinal zone. You see a lot of germinal cells. And those germinal cells are basically of stem cell origin. They can uh, divide into, proliferate into, multiply into anything. But yes, stem cell origin. Germinal cells are seen and they have a habit of living in a low oxygen tension. So you see some kind of a, you know, mildly anaerobic area. This zone, as I said, it not only gives you the germinal cell, it not only gives you the sense of storage, it is also important for providing mechanical support. But yes, nonetheless, having said that, the basic area is, the basic essence is that there's a regulation of the chondrocytic proliferation or probably the maturation pathway by responding to the Indian hedgehog gene through past receptors by increasing the expression of the parathyroid related peptide. So this is how it all works. So there's a PTHRP, its expression is increased through a receptor, it goes to Indian hedgehog, it leads to maturation and proliferation of the chondrocytic area. So to understand resting zone, first of all, let me tell you, it's a very multidimensional kind of a zone. It does a lot of multitasking. So not only storage, not only you have the germinal stem cells, not only the mechanical support, it helps in the proliferation also. It basically provides you a kind of a framework because the actual proliferation starts in the next zone, but it provides you the framework for that. Now, uh, there are two diseases, two set of diseases, I would say, uh, which affect this layer area, this layer. One is the Gaucher's disease. I'm sure we all have heard of it. Then the SOX9 uh, gene, SOX9 gene associated diseases like chemtomelic dysplasia, they usually affect this zone. The blood supply is concerned. Please remember that vessels do pass through this zone, but they don't supply it. So that's about the first layer, the resting zone. Next, we have a very important layer that is what is called as a proliferative zone. So now the actual chondrocytic proliferation starts and these chondrocytes actually you know they stack over one another 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 and they're the reason behind the longitudinal growth are you trying to understand my point so this is the actual proliferative zone where chondrocytes have started proliferating and they are going to result into a complete longitudinal growth of the bone which happens basically because of the stacking of the chondrocytes Again, this is an area of high oxygen concentration, but what is most important is that the actual proliferative activity, the cellular proliferation happens here. Production of the extracellular matrix happens here. This is going to decide how much, you know, length a bone is going to achieve. 
So in other words, I can say that the height of, height of a person is dependent upon the height of an individual long bone and that in, in turn depends upon the proliferative zone of the physis. So if anything happens to this, that is most often going to give rise to the most common cause of dwarfism that we see in our day-to-day -day life, that is a chondroplasia. So I told you that you know your height depends upon the height of the long bone which in turn depends upon the physis which in turn depends upon the activity of the proliferative zone so all disorders of um, height issues now whether that is achondroplasia whether there is med scd the metaphysiopyphyseal dysplasia the spondyloepiphyseal dysplasia diastropic dysplasia um, laron syndrome it's a, it's a good uh, topic i'm sure you all have heard of it hereditary dwarfism plus trunkal obesity so all these disorders they affect the proliferative zone so after the resting zone after the resting zone where cells are essentially concerned about storage and providing mechanical support and you know providing an environment for proliferation after the proliferative zone which is the actual area of activity now i come down to my third zone which is called as the hypertrophic zone by the way in certain books you will find this to be called as maturation zone also let me be honest now what happens in here let's try to understand first thing is that chondrocytes increase into the size till now they were increasing in number i totally remember i told you they proliferate so now whatever chondrocytes that you have they increase in size and not only increase in size they accumulate a lot of mitochondria now the interesting part is that in proliferative zone you had a hell lot of cellular proliferation you had a hell lot of uh, matrix production here you will see just the cells occupying a lot of area because they have grown five times the original size and you will see very less of extracellular matrix and therefore it is very ironically yet true it's a weak zone it is actually the weakest layer of the physis it is actually the weakest layer of the growth plate now why did I call it a maturation zone? You have to understand because now the cartilage will start maturing into bone. How does that happen? Osteoblast will enter into this area. So you have sinusoidal vessels, osteoblast migrate along them and they use this layer, they use the cartilage as a scaffold, as a basement. They make bone over it. Understanding my point? So first of all, why do we call it a hypertrophic zone? Because the cells increase in size, usually five times the normal size. Why do we call them as maturation zone? Because, you know, the, the, the bone starts maturing here. The cartilage starts getting converted uh, into the bone and osteoblast, basically, as I said, they migrate along the vessel. They use cartilage as a scaffold and they make bone over it. But very ironic, even despite you have five, five times increased size in the increase in the size of the chondrocyte but still uh, as i said that uh, because of the less extracellular matrix it is the weakest zone of the entire physis and i'm sure you all have understood that if it is the weakest zone then the most common thing or disease happening through this area has to be trauma so a cfe slip capital femoral epiphysis occurs through this layer physical trauma occurs through this layer and chondroma originates from this layer Mucopolysaccharidosis happens here, hypophosphatasia happens here. And one more thing, although I will not say it's a very hallmark, hallmark kind of a thing, but yes, this zone is widened in rickets. The actual problem in rickets will come in the next layer, but this zone becomes usually widened because the next zone is the zone of provisional calcification. And as I, and I said, as, as, I, as I said earlier, the zone of provisional calcification followed by ossification. So now what is going to happen is, please try to understand that the chondrocytes which are already there, they will start going into apoptosis. So they will start, you know, leading their own death. So because of the apoptosis of the chondrocytes, you will see a lot of metaphysial vessels creeping in into, the, into that area. So you will see a lot of calcification of the extracellular matrix. And now comes, you know, the two rival cells, blast and osteoclast with the vascular invasion. So they'll come, they'll make bone, they will do remodeling, they'll do everything. So technically what I'm trying to tell you is, I'll show you with the help of this diagram that, you know, now since hair chondrocytes have increased in the number of size, like they become five times of their original size, but there is less of extracellular matrix. So you see that, you know, it is the weakest zone and therefore I said it is one of the commonest sites for physical trauma. It is the weakest part, to be honest. But then I told you that osteoblast will come along, uh, you know, certain vessels and they will start depositing bone there and this area will, use as, will be used as a scaffold. So it is kind of a maturation that is happening. But now in this zone, if you will see, 
in this zone if you will see you will see chondrocytes undergoing apoptosis and then this is the metaphyseal vascular invasion i'm sure you can see the uh, you know the hairpin loop vessels are entering inside this area so this area this metaphyseal vascular invasion and chondrocytic apoptosis is basically the reason behind the calcification of the matrix and then blast and class enter and finally you have the bone and remodeling happens now two very important things we need to discuss here one is called as the groove of ranware See, groove of Ranvere is very simple that uh, this is basically supplying the chondrocytes to the periphery for the lateral growth. Now, when I say lateral growth, that doesn't mean but width, chodai. So, <clears throat> if you really wish to have width of a bone, then uh, the chondrocytes are supplied to the periphery in this groove of Ranvere. And as I said that this is the zone of the width or the you know, chodai or the circumferential growth. So it contains osteoblast, fibroblast, chondrocyte, but the bottom line remains the same, that it is the zone for you know the overall circumferential growth. Then you have another very important anatomical structure here called the perichondrial ring of Lacroix. So it's a fibrous tissue, really dense fibrous tissue, which anchors and supports the physis. Now it supports how, I'll tell you. The cartilaginous epiphysis and the metaphyseal periosteum are connected with this. I'll show you the diagram also. But the bottom line remains very simple. See, at times you need to have a watchman to protect your house. Sometimes you need a watchdog to make sure that nothing goes uh, you know, uncontrolled. So it is an anatomic restraint to rapid and uncontrolled longitudinal growth. Now what I'm trying to tell you is that this physis does not grow unexpectedly longitudinally. So this perichondrial ring of Lacroix, which is a dense fibrous tissue connecting the cartilaginous epiphysis to the metaphyseal periosteum, so its job is to ensure that there is no excess longitudinal growth of the bone. And at the same time, this groove of Ranvier is going to supply the cells to have a circumferential growth. Are you able to understand my point? So this is how these two important structures contribute to the anatomy of the growth plate, which in turn has resting zone, proliferative zone, hypertrophic zone, zone of calcification and zone of ossification. So with this, I come towards the end of this uh, video. Thank you so much and all the best to all of you. Bye-bye.